super excited to say that I have successfully passed CS6515, which is the graduate algorithms course in Georgia Tech's online master's in computer science program. I'm more excited than I have been for other courses just because this is a pretty notorious course for being difficult and the final barrier before graduating. And it was, in fact, the last class that I had to take for me to complete the degree. My outcome for the course was an 84.6, which is a very high B. In fact, it's only 0.6 away from an A in the class. The grade cutoffs are definitely kind of weird. It's 85 to 100 for an A, 70 to 85 non-inclusive for a B, and they don't round up, so obviously the 84.6 is a B and it's not considered an A, which is kind of annoying, but that just goes to say that had I not made some small mistakes here and there, I definitely could have gotten an A and I could have taken the final exam, which is optional and can replace your lowest of the three previous exam scores. But I simply was just comfortable with getting a B. I don't really value the A that much more. It's also worth noting that you have to get a B or higher if this class is one of the core courses for your specialization. I don't know about all specializations, but I was machine learning, so in my case, I had to get a B or higher. Nice. Looking at the grade distribution, it seems like each semester over 70% of the people get a B or higher. So the data is in your favor, I would say. I'm definitely aware that this class is very notorious and it seems like there are complaints for it every single semester. I even hear people having to take this class multiple times, like three times before passing. Which is kind of insane, but honestly, respect for the dedication, but I honestly didn't think it was that crazy or that difficult. I would say more so it's stressful and there's a lot of pressure because it's the last class and the way that the grading system is set up. The three exams are really important for your grades since together they make up 24% of your total grade. It's also worth noting that these exams are stressful because it's not like there are 50 multiple choice questions on each one where you can just miss one and it's not a big deal. Instead, they're set up so that there are three sections, two free response and the multiple choice section. And each free response question is usually worth like a third of the exam grade. And it's definitely possible to just like not get any points or very few points on one of the free response questions if it's just not clicking. And that basically happened to me on the first exam and I ended up with a 62.5, which is not awful, I guess, but I just wanna point out that you could do really, really poorly on the first exam and still get an A in the class. I actually just looked at my grade book and I actually got a 67.5, not a 62.5 on the first exam. 89 on the second and 87 on the third. So I'd say decent performance across all three except for the first exam, which I still feel like I should have gotten more points, honestly. It's because the rubric for these exams and the free response questions are pretty formulaic and you can't really argue the rubric against them. But in my case, it was dynamic programming and I solved a similar question, but not the same question. And because they set up the rubric, to have different steps, I guess. If you're solving a different question, each of the sub components on the rubric are also different. So I got very few points on that first exam's free response question. In terms of the content, I wouldn't worry about it too much. And I don't feel like there's any need to do any preparation before the course starts. I mean, it wouldn't hurt, of course, but I didn't and I think it went fine. Generally, the first exam is dynamic programming. The second is graph algorithms and max flow networks. The third is NP completeness and linear programming. I had some experience with the first two exams before from the undergrad courses I've taken. And the third NP completeness, like proofs and reductions and linear programming, was completely new to me, and I still did better on the third exam than I did on the first dynamic programming exam.
the three coding projects are worth 9% of your grade, and I just frankly didn't feel like it added any educational value at all. They were really quick though, none of them took longer than like an hour and a half to do, but unfortunately I got a 6 out of 10 on the third one. The first two you could crowdsource test cases, but the third one you couldn't discuss with others and there was definitely confusion with uh, the instructional team making clarifications throughout the week. And it just so happened that week I was traveling uh, in Montana, so I did the coding project on the weekend. They made a bunch of announcements and clarifications during the week and I kind of skimmed over them when I was traveling, but then missed them, and that's how I ended up with a 6 out of 10. And it was linear programming, so we can't share test cases at all, and just got kind of screwed there. But all things being said, yeah, the coding project's easy. At this point, everyone knows how to program, so I just feel like it didn't really add much. My weekly routine was pretty much as follows. Start off the week trying to watch the lectures at two times speed, even if you don't fully understand it, and then trying to get a look at the homework as soon as possible. Usually can't do the homework, but can at least familiarize yourself with what's being asked. And then midweek on Wednesday, Rocco would do his office hours so you could ask questions about the homework and at least get a overview of the main concepts of the lecture that you maybe fully didn't understand yet. Then I would basically just spend the rest of the week actually finishing and finalizing the homework as well as completing the weekly poll. If there was a coding project that week, I would usually try and knock that out in the beginning of the week as well. They do recommend additional practice problems, but I usually don't have time and would basically just do it in the week before the exam because the week before the exam they don't assign homework. So it's a good time to do the practice problems. And in addition, by then, they would have released all of the solutions to the practice problems. Because if you do the practice problems as soon as they're assigned, they don't initially give out the solutions. So you'd have to wait for them anyways. That's what I did, and I feel like it worked out fine. I don't think there's any point of doing too many additional practice problems, though the ones listed on the Wikidot website are pretty good. That's usually only one or two that are not in the recommended practice problems anyway. And I think that about covers it for this class. I will say that I started out spending a lot more time in the beginning of the semester than the end of the semester, just because I knew what I needed to get on the third exam in order to lock in a B. On average, I probably spent between 15 to 20 hours a week on this class, though I think it's probably a lot closer to the 15 hours a week side of things. Overall, I understand why people complain about this class. There's definitely a lot to be improved, especially with the grading and the weights of the assignments and the rubric items. But it's definitely not as bad as people make it out to seem. If you just stay consistent and pay attention to what's going on in the course each week, you'll be done with the class in no time and hopefully be done with the program soon. Oh.